Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. We're so glad that you've tuned into the program. You're watching Discovering the Bible, and I'm your host, Pastor Nick. And today we're going to be in the book of Ephesians. As you know, we've been studying the book of Ephesians uh, verse by verse. And today we're going to do a little bit of a review. And we're going to talk about the blessings that, that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about uh, salvation, a little bit about salvation, and the fact that God chose you to be in his family from the foundations of the earth. And so before we get uh, too far along, I want to open up in prayer. Father, I thank you for this program. I thank you for OCN Broadcasting. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to be with us on the set today. And I pray that the word would go out and the word would be received today by the people that are viewing and the people that will watch it as it's rebroadcasted. And we thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, gather your family around the, uh, the screen and, and text your friends because today's program is going to be uh, very rich, as all of the programs are, because we're studying the Word of God. And we love the Word of God, and we hope that, that you will come to love the Word of God as well. So today, we're going to be looking at just two verses. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. If I could have slide number 1, please. Uh, chap, uh, verse number 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. And verse 4 says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So there's some things that I've underlined that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the spiritual blessings. We're going to talk about the phrase that says, in Christ. And we're going to be talking about the first part of verse 4 that says, he chose us. So I want to just uh, set the stage, so to speak, for our study today. And for those of you who may be first-time viewers to the program, uh, we're in the book of Ephesians, which is one of the epistles in the New Testament. It follows the Gospels and uh, Acts and Romans. And um, to give you a little bit of background, uh, Paul is the author of this particular book. Uh, and Paul uh, wrote many letters to the different churches that he established uh, in, the, uh, in the area of, uh, of Israel and uh, in the Greek world and, and a lot of different parts of nearby countries to, to Israel. And uh, he was writing to the Ephesians. And in order to understand the, the study that we're going to have today, you have to understand that, that Ephesus was a commercial center. And they, uh, there were Jewish people there, Jewish believers. And uh, there were new believers to the church that accepted Messiah uh, as the Son of God and uh, w became part of the New Testament. And, uh, but the, uh, the city itself uh, had a lot of uh, pagan uh, idols and worship, and they were very much into the world. And as uh, a matter of fact, they didn't know uh, anything about Jesus Christ. They, they worshiped a, a goddess called Diana. So that's kind of a little bit of the setting uh, for the study of, of uh, Ephesus. And I want to start off by saying that, that uh, those of you who know the Lord, who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, uh, this is going to be a very powerful uh, message today. And for those of you who may not know the Savior yet, the Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of our program today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to invite the Lord into your heart. But first, we're going to study the first couple verses, 3 and 4, in the first chapter of Ephesus. And uh, you, you, you need to know that, that we, we operate in two realms. We operate in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm. And by that, I mean that when we're born into this world, we come in as, as little children and we experience things in the natural with our five senses and the things that God has created. He's created the earth and the sky and the animals and the plants and so forth, as you're probably familiar with. But also there's a spiritual world, too, that when we're created, the Bible says that, that we have a spirit. 
and that that spirit is uh, sensitive to the things of God. And that even though we might be walking out our life in this world, we still have a spirit. And for those of you who have accepted the Lord, you have the Holy Spirit living within you, in your heart. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that as, as we get along into our program. Also, I want to share with you that in the spiritual realm, there are some things that we can't see with our natural eyes. So there's uh, the visible and there's the invisible. And naturally, the things in this world that we are used to and that we use uh, the eye gate, uh, those things are visible to us. And we can, we can understand, we can function, and so forth. But there's also a spiritual world that you may not know about. And uh, the Bible speaks of uh, invisible things that we can't see, yet they're very real. And this is in the spiritual realm. And that's one of the reasons why I like to study the, the Word of God and to go into depth so that you can get more understanding uh, that God has a plan and that there is a spiritual dimension that you may not be aware of. And we want to we put you in touch with that spiritual realm a little bit today. Now, um, as, I, as we read in our opening scripture today in verse 3, we talked about spiritual blessings. And we talked about the phrase, in Christ. And so first, I want to talk to you about the phrase, in Christ. And what that means is that that's our, our spiritual position in the spiritual realm. And those of us that are connected to the Lord Jesus Christ have access to these blessings. And in a few minutes, I'm going to enumerate on these blessings so you can kind of get an idea of, of what they might be. And they're, they're, they're very different than, than what you might think of a blessing in the natural realm. And so we're going to cover that in just a minute. But that speaks of our position because... When we're here in these bodies on this earth, we experience things in what we call the natural realm. But uh, the Bible says that when we accept Christ, that we have a position in the heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have access to every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And so uh, what are some of these blessings? The definition of blessing is that it's divine privileges and the resources that are now available to believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So some of these blessings are, the first one is pardon. And what that means is that if you've uh, sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that through a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can receive pardon for your sins and pardon for the consequences and the guilt that might come along with, with your shortcomings and so forth. So this is a tremendous blessing. Another blessing is the peace of God. You know, in our society and in our world today, there are so many people that are unhappy and struggling and sad. But when you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you can have the peace of God. Another blessing is what we call redemption, which means that that we have been redeemed from our, our, our sinful nature uh, through the power of Jesus Christ. And we can have a victory and success in our life without uh, some, of the, some of the issues that maybe uh, we've dealt with in the past or that we're struggling with right now. The Bible says that we've been adopted into the family of God. Think about that, to be in God's family. I know that many of you have a, maybe a good relationship with your parents and you know what it means to have a good family. Well, the, God has taken it a step further, and he's invited you to be part of, of his family. Another blessing is what we call sanctification. And what that means is that those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ have been set apart from the things of this world to fulfill the, the, the destiny and the, the purpose of, of the life that God has intended for you. And, uh, and another blessing is what we call eternal life. And we're going to talk about that toward the end of the program, what it means about eternal life. Also, a blessing is that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If, uh, if you look at the Bible as a whole, it's divided up into two testaments. It's divided up into the Old Testament, which are uh, the study of the Torah or the law, and all of the prophets, the minor prophets and the major prophets, and then 
there's the New Testament. And the New Testament are the things that have happened after the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, walked the face of the earth, had his ministry, and was crucified and died. And um, now we can have the presence of the Holy Spirit because of Christ's finished work. But prior to Christ coming on the face of the earth, the Holy Spirit did not dwell in, in, in people. Uh, also, uh, one, of the, one of the greatest blessings, I think, is that we have access to the promises of God. There's over 6,000 promises in the Word of God that are for believers, for you and for me, that know the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these blessings can't be purchased with money. You can't go down like you, if you want to buy a car or buy a, a house or something like this. There's something that we can attain, but we have to operate in faith. And we're going to talk a little bit about that a little bit later in our program. Now, this, the verse 4 that we looked at at the very beginning of the show said that Jesus chose us in him, in Christ, before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And we're going to concentrate on the first part of that verse right now, where it says, just as he chose us in him. And you might say, well, what, is, what exactly does that mean, that God chose us? Well, I'm going to give you an illustration and I hope that you can follow along and maybe it'll give you a little better understanding of what this phrase means that God chose us. Imagine, if you will, that, that at the foundations of the earth, before the earth was created, before man was created, that there was a meeting of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they met and the subject of their meeting was the planning of creation. And so they laid out everything on the table. If you can imagine a conference room and a conference table. And they, they said, well, we're going we're gonna to create this. We're going to create the, the earth. We're going to create animals. We're going to create a lot of things. But we're also going to create man. And when I say man, that includes women and children as well, okay? But I'm just going to refer to it generally as the creation of, of man. And so they started going through the corridors of time, looking down into the future, the future generations, looking ahead at their plan that, that was going to be born on the earth. And they said, we're going to create people. And you might say, well, why did God want to create people? Well, God is all about family, and he's all about relationships. And he set up a system in the garden with the original parents, Adam and Eve, so that they could have children and so that they could have family. And he did that so that we could get an understanding of what God wants to do with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. Uh, and so he used the, the, the creation of man and the, the concept of the family so that we would understand. So as they look down this quarter of time to future generations, to our generation, to the generation right behind us and the generation ahead, they said, we've got a problem because we know that man is going to, he's going to, he's going to sin. And what, what are we going to do? Because that isn't our wish, but we can see what, what's going to happen down the road because they are God, okay? They can see things and do things that we, we can't do, that we, we have some limitations. And so Jesus was at the meeting. He was at the table, and he said to the Father, he said, I will go and sacrifice my life for the penalty of sins to redeem mankind. And, and then God said that he would pour out all of these blessings that he had intended for the original family and all the families that have followed since Adam uh, over 5,000 years ago. And he said, I'm going to put these blessings on Jesus Christ and, uh, and I'm going to make them available to future generations. And so he knew that you were going to be created in this generation that we're in right now. And the Bible says he chose you. And you might say, well, how, 
how, how does all that work? I, I was never at that, that conference meeting. I came several thousands and thousands of years uh, further on in the future of history. And when he said he chose us, he was speaking to Jesus Christ and the future generations that would come. And so we had a representative at that meeting, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we see in this verse that he knew us from the foundations of the world. He knew that we would be born. He could see us that far into the future because he is God. And he chose you. He called you by your name. He said, Johnny and, and Nick and Ruth and, and uh, Jim and Judy and, and whatever your name is, he knew your name and he called it out back in eternity past. And so we see that, that, uh, that God chose us. And we're going to find out what happened with that original plan and, and how God set up a plan of redemption for us. And this idea of, of God wanting to have a relationship with you and me and the fact that, that we have the sin nature, that uh, the term called salvation is the term that means that, that we can still have a relationship with, with Almighty God through the person of Jesus Christ because of his finished work when he was here two th over 2,000 years ago and uh, was crucified, died, was raised from the dead, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And so we see that, that this whole notion of, of God choosing us originated with God. And we see that, that, uh, that God's love seeks the sinner because the Bible says that, that all have fallen short of the glory of God uh, and have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And yet, if we look into the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So in, the, in, the, in God's uh, revelation and in the, the Word, he talks about man being lost because we were separated from him because of our sin. And you have to understand that, that God is a holy God and that he can't, the sin can't uh, exist in the same place of a holy God. And so when, when original parents sinned, uh, that separated them from, from God. And so someone had to uh, pay the penalty for those sins. Now, Adam and Eve couldn't do it, but the Son of God could do it and make the perfect sacrifice to God for the sins of creation of all of humanity, past, present, and future. And so uh, that's what the Bible refers to as being lost. It means that, that we, we no longer have fellowship with God because of the sin and the consequences of sin. Now note that God chose us even before he created the universe. At the foundations of the, of the earth, he chose you. So salvation is wholly of his grace and not on the basis of anything that we do. We can't earn it. We can't pay for it. We can't be good enough and so forth. It's something that God has uh, determined, and it's a free gift, but we have to take a step of faith and invite the Lord Jesus Christ into our heart. And at the end of the program, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Now, you might say, well, are we forced to accept Jesus? I mean, don't we have a free will and a free will choice? And the answer is yes, you do have a choice. And yes, God didn't mandate that you accept his son. He gave you a choice. And so does this mean that the sinner, uh, does the sinner respond to God's grace against his own will? And the answer is, is no, that, that God, because of his grace, he, he makes us willing to respond to his invitation to be part of his family and to accept his son. He is God and he knows, he knows our choice even before we do. And even though we have a will, he is not caught by surprise. He knew that Adam would fall and he came up with a redemption plan through his son Jesus. And the Bible says in uh, Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 that the Lamb of God was slain before 
the foundations of the world. So Jesus said, I will, I will be that sacrificial lamb and I will make it possible for mankind to be redeemed and to have uh, that fellowship restored with Almighty God, with the living God. Now, um, you, those of you who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what I'm talking about. But there may be many of you who are viewing this program today that don't know much about God or don't know much about Jesus or don't know about the plan that he has for you. And so I'm going to share a little bit of my testimony with you. And I want you to listen to it. And we're going to have a, a time of prayer a little bit later in the program. But uh, I can remember when I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and for those of you who are watching the program who are believers, I'm sure that you can remember the time when you came to the Lord as well. But my particular story is that I was raised in a, in a Catholic home, and I was about eight years old when I first accepted the Lord Jesus into my life, and that was a defining moment in my life at that young age of, of eight years old. And then I went to private school. I went to a Catholic school. And during high school, everyone was required to take a class called religion each semester. And by the time I graduated, when I was about 18 years old, I was a religious person. I was what you might refer to as like a Pharisee uh, in the Old Testament in the times of Jesus, because I knew the law. I knew the commandments. I knew what was right or wrong. But I didn't really have the living Jesus in my heart. And I, I didn't really have victory over uh, my, my sin life and, and different things that I was struggling with. And so by the time I graduated, as I said, I was, I was a religious person. And then if you go forward 10 years to 1972, I found myself wandering in the desert. You might say, well, what, what does that mean? You know, we're here in Southern California. There isn't a desert here. Well, what that's an allusion to is in the, in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible, when the uh, Hebrew uh, children and nation was uh, set free from Pharaoh in Egypt, they were, they were led by Moses to go to the promised land because God had something better for them than the slavery that they were exposed to in Egypt. But because of their unbelief, they wandered in the desert for 40 years before they actually got to the promised land, to Canaan. And uh, all of the, the uh, elder people that were living at the time, during those 40 years, they died and they never really got to see the promised land. But there were some that did get to see the promised land. Joshua and Caleb were, were two of the main ones that, that got into the promised land uh, eventually. And so I had kind of a desert experience. And by that, I mean that as far as the Lord was concerned, there was like dryness. I just wasn't, I just wasn't uh, thirsty enough to pursue God with, uh, with everything that I had, with my mind and my will and my strength. <clears throat> and so I found myself wandering and dry in the desert. But then I got a wake-up call from the Lord and rededicated my life to him in 1972. And by this time I was well into my career path. I was married and started a family. During the next 20 years, I had a hunger and a thirst for the things of God and experienced a tremendous growth in the knowledge and wisdom of the Lord. And, but something was missing. Even though I had a relationship with the Lord and even though I knew his word pretty well, there was something that I, I experienced that I, I felt was missing. Then in 1991, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this was truly a defining moment in my life. And my life has never been the same since then. And so your life can change. Your life can be beautiful and can be wonderfully changed by a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But before we get to that prayer, I always like to share a Bible verse of the day in addition to the text that we're studying. And today's Bible verse, if I could have screen number two, is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
And so we see in the beginning of this verse that God loves the world. He loves his creation. He just wants us to cooperate with him and to accept his son uh, as, as the son of God, as, as Messiah. And it's very simple. It's a step of faith. But he loves, he loves, he loves the sinner. He doesn't want you to stay in that condition, but he does love you. I want to assure you of that today. And he sent his son to fulfill a redemption plan so that it, it would be possible for us to have a relationship with the living God. And notice at the end of that verse, he says that we should not perish but have everlasting life. And what that means is that there is a life after this natural life that we have on this earth. Many of you might think that this is all that there is, that once we fulfill uh, our lifespan, maybe an average of 70 years, and we die, that, that that's it. But the Bible says that, no, there is a life after this, which the Bible refers to as eternal life. And what that means is that spirit that's in us that we talked about at the top of the program uh, is not subject to death. Our physical body is, but not the spirit man. And that spirit man is going to uh, go in one of two destinations. He's either going to be united with, with Jesus and with God in heaven, or he's going to be eternally separated from God in a place that we call hell. And I don't want you to be in that condition, and, and uh, neither, does, neither does Jesus. And so uh, this verse says that we can make a choice, and we can have everlasting uh, life. And so right now I want to lead you in a prayer for those of you who are seeking God, for those of you who have heard the name of Jesus, but you don't uh, know how to have a relationship with him or really who he is. So I'd like you to look into the, the screen that you're watching and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I have blown it. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I believe that you took my place on Calvary and you paid the price of my sin and the sins of humanity when you suffered and died and became the perfect sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God. And I believe that, that you were crucified, that you died, and that you were raised from the dead, and that you dwell, uh, in, and you're seated at the right hand of God uh, right now. And I invite you to come in, into my heart and I promise to follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, I want to congratulate you and I want to celebrate with you. And I'd like to hear from you. And you can contact me at my, my website, which is www.riveroflifehebrewstudies.com. Or you can contact me through OCN Broadcasting, which is the website is www.ocnbroadcasting.com. And there's a connect button. Uh, at the website of uh, OCN Broadcasting and at my, my uh, website, which is uh, riveroflifehebrewstudies.com. Uh, and we want to hear from you so that I can pray for you and I can help you uh, in your journey with the Lord Jesus Christ, make some uh, resources available to you. And so we're at the close of our program, and I just want to close by saying that I love you and we love you here at OCN Broadcasting. We ho I hope that you will continue to watch this program and other programs that are offered on OCN Broadcasting so that you can grow in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and that you can experience the blessings of heaven that are available to you today and that you can know and understand the fact that God loves you with an unconditional love, and he always will. And, and so until next time, it's been great being with you, and be sure and tune in for the next program. And until then, may God richly bless you. Amen.